you know, a gallon, a gallon of waste cooking oil or any fuel itself can provide us with several days of, of power and hot water, even if we have almost no sun. So my name is Joe Fisher, and we're here at the Dacha Project uh, homestead uh, in central New York. Central? Yeah. Central New York. And we're looking here at our tri-generator. Uh, we call it a tri-generator because we, we get three different benefits from running this motor. Um, we get the benefit of generating compressed air, which we use to either store or we use to pump water out of our compressed air well pump. We also get, um, we cannibalize waste heat from the motor to heat up a 170 gallon stock tank that's well insulated inside of the house that provides us with all of our domestic hot water and we also run this generator head itself right here that produces up to three kilowatts of continuous um, AC current power that also feeds the house that we use to charge our batteries and we actually do a large degree of cooking with it uh, and everything else fun that you can do with electricity so the, the system as a whole, I'll go through the individual parts, is we have, this is the motor itself, and this is a Indian replica of the original 1929 Lister CS patent. Um, probably the most common and probably popular stationary engine ever made. This, it's actually a fairly large motor. It weighs almost a thousand pounds uh, by itself. And it has roughly 300 pound flywheels, depending upon how they're configured. Um, sorry, two stroke, single cylinder, two stroke diesel motor. And it only produces six peak horsepower, um, which means the motor itself can only produce a theoretical maximum of around three kilowatts of energy. And we are running ours right now, unconverted, on 100% uh, straight filtered waste cooking oil. Um, uh, it's pretty common for people to be able to run this particular motor on a very wide variety of fuel. It's one of the reasons why it's very popular. With very little modifications, uh, this particular motor, because of its old design and its ease of repair and maintenance, can run virtually any hydrocarbon liquid fuel. I would have little concern at all uh, running diesel fuel, number two, heat, home heating oil, waste cooking oil, hydraulic fluid, brake fluid, transmission fluid, mineral oil, camping fuel, <clears throat> just about any kind of fuel that you can run through a heavily converted diesel engine, you can also run through this, possibly easier um, than you could a uh, car. And so this is the motor itself. This right here is a compressor head that came off of an old, I believe, mid 80s um, um, air compressor that you would typically see like in someone's garage. It was, it was, it was, it was a higher quality one for the time, uh, Speed Air brand. So it has a cast iron compressor head on it. And um, so instead of using the motor to run the generator to generate electricity to power the electric motor, which then spins the compressor producing compressed air. We're just running it right off the belt, directly off the motor, saving all the inefficiencies of what, three different conversions. And I have not been able to calculate exactly how much air this compressor head generates uh, because it's based upon the RPM of the motor, but I'm gonna estimate that it produces between seven and 10 cubic feet per minute which is actually quite a bit. Um, th this, that, that amount of compressed air could lend itself to charging a very large compressed air battery, which we at some point hope to have out here, uh, probably in the form of a 500 or 1,000 gallon um, decommissioned propane tank. Um, and if we're able to build that, we have the ability to run devices that run on compressed air um, as if, you know, some, some wood shops, for example, use compressed air saws and things like that. And if we had a large amount of compressed air that we essentially have for free, it can help us reduce our reliance on stored electricity in a battery bank. Um, over here we have the actual generator, generator head itself. And this took a considerable amount of, uh, amount of finding to get. 
Um, but this is what they call an ST type generator head. I don't actually know what the S and the T stand for, but it is significant. Um, this is actually a 7.5 kW uh, generator head, and it's 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 way oversized based upon the uh, amount of usable energy the motor itself can produce continuously. But because of the flywheels on this motor are so large and they weigh so much, the flywheels have the capability of, of providing a quick burst of substantially more than three kilowatts um, of energy. So even though the motor itself can only sustain six horsepower of of con six horsepowers of continuous power generation, the flywheels can affect can in effect let it burst to 15 or 20 horsepower. I mean, I'm, I'm being loose here with my with my uh, numbers. Even though our motor is only six horsepower, we could feasibly have up to 7.5 kilowatt surge loads on electrical devices such as uh, uh, welders or large pumps or large electric motors. Um, and so that, that 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 makes up the basis of what you're what we're seeing right here. So we have one motor that we're getting three three uses out of. We're getting we're getting about forty thousand to fifty thousand BTUs per hour of, of heated water. We're getting electricity and we're getting compressed air. So um, another little fun detail about this particular motor is that one of the reasons why it's still in heavy use in heavy use today. Um, typically in developing countries is because it's not only is it easy to repair, it's also very fuel efficient. At 50 to 60% load, it seems to be consuming about a quart of waste cooking oil an hour. Um, you know, a gallon, a gallon of waste cooking oil or any fuel itself can provide us with several days of, of, of um, power and hot water, even if we have almost no sun. I'll go ahead and start it now and it's going to generate a fair bit of soot and smoke when it very first starts because the motor has to strain very hard to get the flywheels up to speed. And once it gets up to speed and once the engine heats up, it actually produces almost no noticeable particulate out of the, you know, out of the exhaust. And compared to even you know, a fairly efficient wood stove, it's probably equivalent level of particulate. Pressurize the water before it goes into the house. 